What we'll try and do is, Sanjay and me, we've, uh, we've, we've picked out excerpts from uh, writings in this book and we'll pull out some of those and get Rahul's, uh, Rahul's opinion on those. And the first one that we've got is actually a, is, is, is a pretty interesting one. Ed, Ed Smith's written an article that finds, uh, that finds place in the book. And he says, as, as a lot of us have understood, as a lot of us have had the pleasure of knowing Rahul over the years have understood, he says, in that sense, Rahul Dravid is a true gentleman. Where many sportsmen flatter to deceive, Dravid runs deep. Still waters? Run deep? He's a man of substance, morally serious, intellectually curious. For all his understatement, he couldn't fail to convey those qualities to anyone who, anyone who watched him properly. How does it feel to hear things written like that about you? I think with Eddie, he was always good with words. Yeah. <laughs> But Even you know, then, uh, it's, it's, it's like a painter painting a scenery. Unless the scenery is not good enough, he doesn't have a good subject to paint. Oh, I don't know about that. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's just like really, uh, you know, uh, big words. And were you always an intellectual cricketer? I mean, do you do you are you comfortable with the tag intellectual assigned to you? Yeah, I am comfortable with that tag because that's mm -hmm. what who I was. I mean, I, mm -hmm. there's no uh, you know hiding away from the fact that uh, I did think uh, deeply about this game, and and I thought deeply about it because I loved it. You know, I I was curious about it right from a young age. Uh, it's all I wanted to do, uh, you know, it's something I grew up doing, uh, you know, so I wanted to know everything about it. I wanted to know how good I could become, uh, you know, I challenged myself, I asked questions, uh, you know, that's who I was and that's, you know, that was probably my nature in some ways. Do you think you're too different from, uh, from some of the others? I was who I was and I, I know people are different, you know, people are different. Uh, there are, I'm not the only, in, uh, you know, intense or intellectual cricketer. I've played with other cricketers who are, you know, pretty, uh, have been pretty in, intense and intellectual themselves. I'd say Sanjay was maybe not to the, not, not to the obsessive level that I was sometimes, but, <laughs> but he was, I mean, and, and you know, uh, so there, there have been cricketers like that as well. So it's just, uh, you know, I think the, the beauty of this game and the great thing about this game is it allows different people to, to succeed and it allows uh, everyone to express themselves and, and I think in some ways this intellectualism or this, this, this curiosity of mine was a strength, uh, was a big strength for me as well as sometimes you know a, a weakness as well. I think a good time for me to jump in because this is something that I saw in Rahul very early. I think this, this exercise that we are currently having is basically Rahul reacting to what's been written about him. Normally you have certain cricketers reacting very quickly to what's written about them. He's got a few months to ponder on what's written about him. And just to take up from what Harsha has been talking to you, this is something I wrote uh, on you, on Crick Info. I love the caption, by the way, because for me that is what Rahul Dravid is all about. The grit to be great. I think that is where, you know, he's exceptional. I saw Sachin Tendulkar, who achieved greatness, but you could see the child prodigy in him when he was 16. I saw this guy when he played for uh, the rest of India, Patiala. But Ludhiana. Ludhiana. On a difficult pitch. See, and he remembers. I huh? See, he, he remembers. Not probably, Patiala, Ludhiana. I'll, I'll probably tell you how Sanjay got out also. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a difficult pitch. And this guy got a 90. And I could see that he wasn't a prodigy. But I could see that there was something exceptional about him. I must confess, Dravid's at attitude at the start of his career concerned me. As young cricketers, we were often reminded to not think too much and sometimes reprimanded by our coaches. I remember Dilip Vengsarkar telling me, Jasta vichar karno ko gap chup khel. And senior teammates for doing so. Being a thinker in cricket, it is argued, makes you complicate a game that is played best when it is kept simple. And there's one incident I'll never forget, I think it was Grand Oberoi somewhere, where Rahul was you know, at a dinner table, I think Babu and everybody was Srinath, everyone was having dinner and this guy's practicing something at the dinner table. He was doing, as if trying to maybe find a way to, you know, get rid of a batting flaw that we were thinking about at the time. And I remember being concerned about it at the time and sharing this with Srinath, where I could see a little bit of myself in you, obsessing over the flaws instead of, you know, being happy about the strengths. Did you ever feel this way that, uh, that perhaps you were overthinking and were there times in your career where you felt Rahul stop thinking and just simplify things and get on with it? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think you sort of hit the nail on the head when you, when you say that at, there were times when I did complicate this game, you know, when I, when I sort of thought too much about it. 
Uh, but that was who I was and, and I think thinking about the game and working on a lot of my weaknesses and, and overcoming them and the challenges that I faced. Like you say earlier, I mean, I wasn't the most prodigiously talented young cricketer. I was not. I knew that. I wasn't the most prodigiously talented cricketer in Karnataka, let alone India. You know, I wasn't, I mean, I could look around some of my teammates in the school team and I could say that, you know, they could probably hit a ball cleaner than I could. So I had to work through, you know, that lack of talent, so to speak. And I, you know, it wasn't a huge lack of talent, but, you know, uh, th that lack, lack of natural flair. And I had to work through that. So maybe right from a young age, I had to fight for things. I had to earn them. You know, runs never came easy for me, even at school or at a junior level. So I think that's where, maybe that's the sort of foundation of this, this thinking or this analyzing the game and trying to get better all the time. It was a strength because, you know, I was able to overcome a lot of things. I was able to push myself to limits that sometimes even I didn't think were possible. Um, but the, the red flag to that was that, you know, it's a very thin line. It's a thin line between doing it and then crossing that line of overcomplicating it. And there were times in my career when I did, you know, probably cross that line. And that was a red flag to me. And I think over the years as I got better... Was there somebody who would tell you that you're crossing the line or you would... Yeah, I mean, I, I would realize it myself. A lot of people would, you know, senior players like you. I remember Sri and Anil, you know, constantly being on my, on my ear and telling me, look, Rahul, sometimes, you know, you're thinking too much about it. Just relax, enjoy yourself a little more, smile a bit more. Uh, but as a young kid growing up, desperate to do well, uh, it's not, it was not always the most natural thing for me to fall back on. I, I'd like to believe that as time went on and I became a more confident person, I travelled the world a little more and, and I think you've probably seen me you know, at the very early stage in my career. I'd like to believe as I, as I grew up and, uh, and I you know, sort of you know, matured a little bit, I was able to manage it and, and change it. And I, think, I don't think that sort of basic trait of yours will ever go away. But I think I managed the whole process a lot better. And it was always a red flag for me. <coughs> as, as sometimes I feel, you know, with some of the guys who can be too casual about their sport or who don't think about it at all. Like you say, just go out and play naturally. I think the red flag for them is that they can cross that line of being too casual at times. Yeah. So there is a red flag for each of us. And, and my red flag was, yes, that, you know, there were times. And I can remember toes in which I, you know, sometimes overcomplicated. I remember 99 in Australia when I had a terrible toe. I, I, you know, I just, I, I was so keen and so eager to do well in Australia. And I, you know, I thought that, I went there thinking I had done pretty well so, till then and I thought, you know, if I can do well on this tour, it will sort of stamp me as this international player of repute and I'll earn the respect of, you know, all my colleagues and I'll earn the respect of everybody and that's what I, I wanted to do. So I just, you know, I, I, I froze and I, I just kept thinking and I kept analyzing it and, you know, maybe it took that sort of, that, those three test matches and then we came to India, we did badly against South Africa and that was the time I went to England, you know, where there was six months off. I went to England and I think that freed me up a lot. I, mean, I went to England, a completely new environment, uh, you know, uh, on my own, uh, county cricket, not many people watching, lots of cricket. Mm. And uh, I think that freed me up a lot. I think, you know, it helped me develop as a person. Having to work harder than others to get the same results seems a bit familiar, not having the same flair. We've all been through it. Rohit Brijnath is one of my, my favorite uh, cricket writers. We go back many, many years. And I've always looked at him and said, wow, in much the manner that you look at, an, look at a sports person and say, wow, when he plays certain shots. And, and, and Roy and Rahul talk about the most, most bizarre thing sometimes. I've, I've heard the two of them talk together. But here, here's something that, uh, that, that Rohit wrote. And he said, uh, life intrigued him, yours included. Not just his, yours included. When he came to Singapore once, he charmed my friends. All men? <laughs> Rohit, Rohit? No, Rohit is. But yeah, no, Rohit is. <laughs> anyway, I'll let you think about that. It's, isn't it interesting that he remembered Ludhiana and Patiala but is struggling to remember that? <laughs> so when he came to Singapore once, he charmed my friends. One gave him batting advice and he smiled. What are you reading, he'd ask. What do you think, he'd query. Not about cricket, cricket but tennis, toughness, politics. He'd linger in bookshops, stroll into theatres, sit in wildlife parks. Cricket was not the be-all and end-all of life for you. I mean, or was I this a way to escape? I, uh, yeah, it was a way to escape. I mean, I thought about cricket a lot as we've just had yes. a 10 minutes discussing how much I thought about it. So, you know, I needed some way to get out of that, uh, you know, bubble of mine. And I found in books and conversations with other people about other things, my release. It was my way of... I was a curious person, uh, as you would see even in my cricket. Uh, and, and now that curiosity I needed to, you know, and, and, and this was my release. I think the books and, and the conversations with other people, 
um, I like being challenged intellectually because you know I always felt that was you know uh, uh, that was interesting and always helped me learn something. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I mean this was my release. I, I hated at the end of the day in the evening talking to cricket with someone else because I was talking to myself about cricket all the time. So you know <laughs> I needed to talk to somebody else about something else and and. Uh, just a, a natural curiosity, I guess, about trying to, you know, get to know different things and took a lot of the pressure off me. I found, uh, you know, when I was reading books or speaking to people about other things and trying to find out what's interesting in their lives, uh, you know, uh, I didn't think about cricket and, and then, you know, sort of refreshed me emotionally. You once gave me a book to read that was so large, only you could have finished it. <laughs> and, I, and I almost had to fib saying I read half of it because it was so large, it would take me three years to read. It was David Halberstam's book on Michael Jordan. How could you not have read that in one sitting? What an amazing <laughs> book. <laughs> now you know why he jumped on a half volley. <laughs> and why it's the kind of book you read in one sitting, man. It's an <laughs> I mean, Albert Stam was, was Some people have to work harder for a living, Rahul. Yeah, this was 1998 or 99, maybe, Sri Lanka trip, one of my first tours as commentator. I don't read much. I read the typical Sydney Sheldons and all that, you know, during college days. And suddenly I got into, you know, non fiction and I read this Freedom at Midnight. And I loved it. And I, you know, felt so proud that I read this kind of a book. So fleetingly I just remarked to him, we had gone for dinner once, uh, Sachin, you and Beach Warrior somewhere. And I said, you must read this book, you know, Freedom at Midnight, good. <laughs> he said, I've already read it, it's quite good. <laughs> and then I realized, you know, 98, 99, I think two, three years into your international career, that this guy is different, you know, from <laughs> us cricketers. From us cricketers, right? Eh? Different from us sometimes, too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, Are we look, embarrassing you? No, no. <laughs> okay. I just, I mean, I, 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 I sort of, I, I read a little bit in school and, and I read the Hardy Boys yeah. and the... Archies no, you didn't. My, my son reads better than me. What a six, revelation. Six. Rahul no, Dravid as a child read Hardy Boys. Yeah, you know, <laughs> Magnificent Seven? What a book. <laughs> you, you, didn't, you didn't read Charles Dickens and Jules Verne? No, no, no. no. <laughs> uh. it was, I think it was, it was only in, in, in college, and, and, you know, when I sort of went to college and I met... Um, you know, my friends in college were actually people who didn't play the game and, and you know, we, none, of us were, none, none of us were attending too much class. Uh, I wasn't, but when you're sitting in the in the in the chai shop in front, or when you're sitting in the cycle stand, uh, when you should be in class, and and your friends are you know discussing these various books, and you sort of you start okay, why don't, can you give me one? Or they'll say why don't you read this? Maybe that's a great book, and you know, and then you sort of pick that up in college. It was through college really that I started you know reading, and then I've, and. And, and not for any other reason, I just found that then this reading, when I was on tours with the Karnataka Ranji Trophy team, uh, was a great way for me to, to relax and, and switch off. And you know, I've never been someone who's been able to watch the TV too much. I just find that even when I'm watching TV, I'm constantly thinking about cricket or you know, batting or what's going to happen tomorrow. But with books, I found that I was able to escape from it. In case you become a journalist, you'll discover that the standard journalism practice is you ask 20 questions and then pick up one answer. So the answer of the day so far is you read Hardy Boys. <laughs> anyway, so here's, here's another. And th this is from someone who, uh, who got to know Rahul as he went along, got to know him well enough to marry him eventually, and did something very unusual. We've all known Vijita over the years, and when I first saw an article byline Vijita, I said, no, someone's conned her into doing this, because she'd be the last person to actually write an article on Rahul, knowing the kind of person she's been over the years. But she said something, and, and obviously she's got the inside view of it all better than any one of us could. And she said something interesting, and we'll, we'll read out a little extract from that. Only once I remember, she says, he returned from a test and said, shucks, I shouldn't have done something. I got a bit angry today, once. I lost my temper in the dressing room. He wouldn't say more. Many months later, Viru told me that Rahul had actually thrown a chair that day. I'd never seen him like that and he threw a chair, not because we'd lost, but because of, of, because of how we'd lost. He's always been even-tempered on good, on, days, on good days and bad. He never grumbles and it's very, very difficult to understand what he's feeling because he can internalize everything. She's talking cricket, obviously, right? So, uh, he often said that to succeed in international cricket for such a long time, I've only thought about me and my cricket, but I'm learning to be unselfish. Do you have to learn to be selfish too or...? Well, I, I've always felt that, you know, being, being a cricketer, it, uh, I've always had things done for me in the sense mm -hmm. that, you know, I think uh, growing up, one of the great things about, uh, about cricket and playing the sport that I did and, and at the level that I did is that there were so many people around you actually trying to help you get better. 
yeah. you know, whether it was coaches, it was physiotherapists, trainers, they were being paid to actually help you do something better. I don't, I don't, I don't really see that happening in any other profession. I mean, I, you know, it's not really uh, the case uh, elsewhere. But, but the beauty of you know, sport and, and, and the sport that I played is that there were so many people around me always helping me to get better. Everywhere you went, uh, you, know, you put your bags out of the room, you get it at the next place. You know, it, 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 in a way, it's, it's, you need to be that sort of single-minded and that, you need that dedication and that's why you have a you know, whole group of people around you that, that support you and help you. Obviously, in time, uh, you know, I think selfish to the, to the extent that, yes, I mean, in certain ways, it's a single-mindedness and a, a certain amount of, um, you know, dedication to that. That's a better word. Single-mindedness is probably the more appropriate word for selfish, but not getting angry because I, I can understand the pressures that at some point you're going to be frustrated. Do you have to train yourself not to get angry? Because one of the things sports people say is that if you've got an angry opponent, you've got an easy opponent. But anger on the field, anger off the field, how do you, you control that as a, as a person? I think partly it, it's natural. It's quite natural. I, uh, I, I don't think I've been someone who's got angry very quickly, even when I was young. It's not something that I've had to consciously work on. But then I did realize that, you know, when I do, did get angry a few times or I did uh, try and get outside my own cocoon or, or if someone was mm -hmm. able to penetrate that balloon when I was playing or, you know, uh, I, I didn't play well or I, I, I didn't achieve. I was almost playing for the wrong reasons. You know, there were a lot of times I would try and prove someone wrong or I would try and play for, you know, uh, he said something to me so I should do well and I would never do well. I just, because I... That was not motivation enough for me. I needed it to but be But you did feel that way sometimes and you had to yeah, overcome that. Yeah, I mean, I tried to, you know, sort of, sometimes even if I didn't, I would try and manufacture that, you know, just to see whether that's something that motivated me. But it didn't. You know, I think it's, it's always been a bit of an internal thing for me. It's not really about... Uh, so, I mean, I, I never... Read, I mean, I got angry then in... in <laughs> you threw the chair. Yeah, I mean... And you threw the chair. I think partly did you myself. Throw it, I mean, did I you throw it elegantly? <laughs> I think I smashed it or something, but I think I, I was partly thrown it uh, technically very <laughs> correctly. <laughs> I I was partly angry with myself. I mean, I, I'll be honest. I mean, we uh, we were leading that series 1-0 against England. We go into Bombay uh, in the Test match. You know, I won the toss and I bowled first, which I don't think in hindsight was the you know most smartest decision. But uh, and then. We batted, you know, terribly. We, we bowled badly on the first day and on a wicket. That did help the seamers a little bit. We batted, this sort of thing. But in the end, I just felt that it was an anger with myself as well because <coughs> I hadn't batted particularly well. I thought I'd made a wrong decision up front, and then to end up, you know, uh, capitulating on the last day when we could easily have played mm -hmm. out for a draw, uh, I thought was just. Uh, I mean, I just maybe got a bit upset that day. And uh, yeah. did you surprise yourself? Uh, no, I mean. Uh, I, I, I should always, I mean, I, I, I'm a pretty hard taskmaster on myself. And so, you know, I've got angry with myself a lot of times. So I know uh, what it is like I to get angry. But maybe external, you know, I've, I've probably not been someone who's maybe internalized things too much sometimes. And, uh, you know, sometimes, it's, uh, like sometimes Vijita tells me, it's babe, sometimes you've got to let things out and, you know, have a go at someone. And I think that's a better way because at least the other person suffers, not you. If you just <laughs> internalize the whole thing, you're suffering all the time. Okay, this is about uh, captaincy that uh, experience that you had for a sh short time. And this is Siddharth Monga in the book who has made an observation. Naturally intelligent, a balanced individual, a fan of Mark Taylor's captaincy. Dravid was arguably India's most tactically proficient and aggressive on-field captain. There was something delightfully unpredictable about India under him. In November 2003, standing in as captain, Dravid opened and won the international innings with a spinner the famous two and a half day test match in Mumbai. Just tell us your experience about captaincy of Indian cricket. Because it's something that you didn't seem to want it after a while. So just that phase when you were India captain with a coach who wasn't willing to you know, play second fiddle or he had a personality which somehow came out a bit too much. Well, I, I think, I mean I enjoyed I'd like to get one thing straight is that I, you know, I, I, I loved and I thought it was a great honor and a privilege to, to captain my country. It, uh, you know, I dreamt as a kid of, you know, I dreamt as a kid of growing up and, and wanting to play for India and, you know, that's all I wanted to do. And to be able to actually captain your country was a huge, uh, you know, privilege and honor. And in some ways, I, you know, I had had a taste of what it would be like. So four and a half years before that, I was vice captain. I was vice captain to Saurav and, you know, captained a little bit in, in a few phases as well. But 
when I got the job, you know, I, I, I took it on with, a, with an enthusiasm and an energy that, you know, uh, that sort of, you know, in some ways uh, I felt was needed at that stage and, 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 what, and in a way I wanted to do it. Uh, I think, I mean, I know that in the end I, I sort of gave it up because of that very reason, because I took it up with a certain amount of enthusiasm and an energy and a, and a passion and a, and a desire to do it. And I, and I felt at that stage when I gave it up after that, that somehow over that period that had gone. You know, maybe it was just the amount of cricket we played at that period, some of the up and down results that we had. You know, to be fair, we had some good results as well and we had some crushing disappointments as well. So all that maybe, you know, uh, you know, had a toll on me. So at that stage when I gave it up, I was just not enjoying it. And, you know, I, I, I've tried to tell this to people that I was getting up in the morning and in some of those one day games and thinking, oh God, you know, here's another game of cricket. And, and that, I'm ne I had never felt like that before. I had never felt like that before about a game of cricket. Is and it that a tough job, captaining Indian cricket? Or let me also ask you whether you also have to be built differently to lead Indian cricket for a period of time. I think it's a tough job. There's no doubt about it. I think it's a, it's a tough job. It's a challenging job. Uh, there's no doubt about it. And, uh, and there's a lot of stuff that happens. Uh, outside the field that you need to be able to deal with quite well. You know, in hindsight, there are a lot of stuff that things that I can look back on and say, look, maybe you could have done that better. But I, I don't know of anyone who would look back on, on any stint that he's done as captain and they say that, look, maybe I couldn't have done this or that better. So, But you never got the feeling now, after so many years, that uh, you know, even if I would have changed a bit, it would still be a job that I was not meant to do. It wasn't the kind of job that Rahul Dravid, the way he's built, can do it. Or you think now that perhaps if I had done things differently, I would have made a pretty good job of it. I'd like to believe I still did a pretty good job of it. I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying, I mean, better. obviously, a better job of it, maybe. Uh, yeah, a long I'm sure. What I'm saying is basically a long sort of tenure of, uh, you know, some of the kind that Ganguly or Dhoni have had, a long run as Indian captain. Yeah, maybe if I had paced it out better, maybe some other results had gone our way. I mean, sometimes, you know, when some certain results don't go your way, especially the World Cup, it you know, takes a whole big toll on you emotionally. So. You know, I, if maybe some of those results had gone better, maybe the, my frame of mind would have been better. I would have been able to carry that on for, for a bit longer.